one, welcome to Thought Bubble. My name's Aaron, and I'll be asking the question today. So, today my question is to you, what exactly is thought? Now, let's think about this for a second. Our brains are just a mass of cells, basically our body. So, in this mass of cells that we call our brain, we have neurons. Neurons are pretty much what makes our brain function, or what makes you function, or what makes me function, or what makes every thing pretty much function, except for single-celled organisms. So, we look at these neurons. They're basically, they are what defines us, to be us. They take stimulus from all of our sensory organs, our nose, our tongue, our ears, our skin, our eyes, everything. And it puts that into information into our brains. Now, with this information, your brain has a way to tell you what's going on in your world. It tells you if the light's bright, it tells you what you're smelling, it tells you what you're tasting, it tells you what you're hearing, it tells you if something's hot, cold, if you can feel fur, if you can feel wood. It can tell you a lot of information. But, when you're given information that cannot be interpreted very easily as of what to do with this information, where are we left? Well, we're left with our brains to come up with a solution with this. And the solution to this problem is thought or cognitive reasoning. We are given a way to interpret what to do next. We can be curious and explore things that we don't know. We can be cautious and say where we know it's safe. But biology can only explain so much. It can only explain why certain people can be certain ways, why they're smart, why they're musically inclined, how well they can do with pain, or, or how well they can suppress memories, or something. But biology doesn't give us the understanding of thought. It just can explain it through saying that, oh, thought is just electrical impulses in our brains. But that's not what thought is exactly. And I'm pretty sure everyone on the planet will agree with me. Now, thought exactly can be described by many, many terms. Or definitions, or whatever you want to say. But... I'm not the only one who's, who's thought about this. I mean, scientists and people famous have been thinking about this for thousands of years. I mean, philosophers, psychologists, you know, people we know very well, especially psychologists. That's the study of the mind. But I am just curious what exactly is thought. So I had some time to think to myself. And I was coming up with a bunch of reasons, and of course, I did some research. And, you know, I'm not good with names, I don't remember them very well. But I do remember that there's been, you know, tons of theories to explain what thought is, and some of them have stated that thought is just, you know, a set of analogies that we've learned over time, and that explains our thoughts and what we are capable of. Well, that doesn't sound right. Because I've met some people who are quite younger than me, who are absolutely brilliant. These kids are amazing. And then I met some people older than me that, I'm sorry to say, weren't that bright. Now, there's another way that I think is very close to what I came up with. And it states that thought is just a set of mathematical equations that you use to model yourself or your way to interpret the world. And that's closer to what I thought. But that's not very appropriate, because I could say that personality and emotions are just best understood through math, and I do not believe that's true, because that would state that everything that we could think of, every emotion that we feel, can be described through math, or a set of equations that would best describe the situation, and that would say that everything we do is not personal anymore. It would say that... Once you know the equations, you know that person, or you know those sets of people. And I didn't like that either. So, I came up with this idea, and I'm not sure if I'm the first one or not, I'm probably not. But I came up with this idea when working at the most unlikely place in the world. I was working in a kitchen in Taco Bell. And I remember one day, 
very early on, I was washing the dishes, and it came to me out of nowhere where I was looking at the staff, looking at the kitchen and how it worked. And I remember thinking, uh, this works in a system. Everything works best when you have a system. Everything can flow the way it's supposed to. Orders come in, we make the food, order goes out. It's that simple. You know, dishes get dirty, I wash them, we reuse them. It made sense. So, I remember thinking that our brains could operate under the same system. And the way I interpreted it was, imagine that your brain was this big, big box, or if you would better think of it as a factory. And inside this factory, you have different machines doing its own individual thing, and not every machine run on the same line. Every machine could operate, it could come back, it could go out, and you'll never see it again. But the basic information that you needed to know is that information came in, the box did its thing, and information went out. Now, you take this information, and it gets processed through a system of its own machines. These machines can range from anything from our basic thought, to our personality, to our brain's unconscious or very primitive systems or organs or sensory things. It, it, would, it would take this information, find a way to interpret what it is and what to do with it next. And so that's how it would know where to ship it off next. And then after that happened, you get your final product. And when you get that, you could either say, we'll ship it back and we'll figure out what we can do with it then, or you can say, put it out because we don't need to do anything more with it. And that's where the, the, the instincts versus thought would come in, is if you put it back to a different machine, that would be thought. But if you shipped it out, that would be your instinct. You know, if someone's coming at you with a knife, your instincts would tell you what to do. It would tell you whether you want to fight him or run. Or if someone's handing you a painting and say, what do you think this looks like? Well, that would be shipping it back in so that you can process in a different machine trying to figure out what this painting is. You know, there there's a bunch of different ways that other people couldn't interpret it. But that's the one I like the best. That's the one I felt made the most sense. But that could also bring up more questions. You know, what defines thought? Do you need language? I don't know. Sit back in your room, close your eyes, and try to imagine a flower. You don't need thought. I mean, you don't need language to define that. You, all you need is images, sensory details. So language isn't important, but it can help. It can help you think. It's that voice inside your head. It what gives you an area to talk and process information by yourself with nobody else. And that's pretty cool. I mean, it, I mean, for me, I think it would suck if we didn't have a way to speak to ourselves. Everyone does. You know you do. But understanding thought from a scientific perspective, not just my perspective, has taken, you know, a bunch of people's ideas which is great because everyone's thinking in these. But it's taken a bunch of different turns. It's, it's hard to define thought as to what it truly is. There, there are theories that say that the, the mind itself can be understood by itself. You know, a functional system that can only be thought separate from the body. But then you have people, the embodiment, that, that imagines that the brain and the body work together and they can only be studied together in an embodied state, you know. And you have these two different ideas that keep butting heads, but who's to say who's right and who's wrong? Not me, not you, but we all have our interpretations. So, back to my question, what exactly can define thought or what exactly is thought brings me to another question. Are your memories thought? They appear in your head. They recur inside your head. You can remember things word for word. You can remember the, the wind blowing on a day that you thought was peaceful and you were laying behind a tree. Or you remember a very scary movie from a long time ago whenever you were six and shouldn't be up that late. But that's a memory. So is a memory a thought because it occurs inside your head. 
but you're recurring something that already happened, not trying to create an idea inside your head. Well, I don't know. It's, I don't know yet. But then that brings me to another question. Is not just alone memory, but dreaming. Now this is a hard question, because dreams by themselves are some of the most complex and most mind-boggling things that we've ever seen. Because it, most of the time they make no sense. You know, it could be that I'm laying in my bed, I wake up, and there's a banana coming out of my forehead, and I think that's perfectly okay. It makes no sense, because that doesn't happen. But in a dream, anything could happen. But you're not awake, so are you consciously creating that? Well, that's a discussion for lucid dreaming versus REM sleep, you know, but that could also answer a question, but that will have to come at a later date. So, what can exactly define thought? Our everlasting question. Thought can only be best described by itself. It is a system that works to help itself. It's almost like a perpetual motion machine, engine, computer, any way that you would like to think about it. Alan Turing liked to think that a machine could take information, process it, and then know what to do with it. And that works. He proved it works. He created the first computer in World War II. And that's what gave us the Turing machines, or what the, we better know them yet as computers. They gave us a way to process information and then reprocess it into something else. And that is awesome. However, that would only describe from my system the instinctual system. It does not give us cognitive thought. I believe we're getting closer and I think that's awesome. I would love to be able to talk to a computer. I would love to be able to have online chats with my computer best friend. You know, I think that would be amazing. Now, there are some people who would be like, oh no, computers will take over the world once they gain AI. If a computer gains an artificial intelligence, then that's in a sense just a computerized human. And we don't know everything, so what's to say a computer knows everything? You know? Things to think about. Anyways, guys, I will see you next week with another episode. I'm Aaron. Peace out.